say or do. No treasures we can bring that can ever match the price Jesus paid for us at Calvary. We pray that you would accept our praise and worship today as we remember the sacrifice you gave to save our lives. Help us understand, though, that it does not end here, but let it be an extension of who we are. And let everything we do glorify your name in all we do. We pray this in Jesus' holy name. God said, you are mine. I am calling you by name, and you are mine. Let's think of, let's sing about that on page 419. I am dying, O oh Lord. I have heard that voice.
who seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sins before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our own heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. We have not heard the cry of need. Forgive us, we pray. Forgive us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Beloved, hear the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The message that we should be showing others with our lives and shouting from the mountaintops that in the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. We apologize on behalf of the staff. I think we've had some miscommunication as to this backpack blessing and how things are going to be were to be happening, but we want to rectify that. So we're going to invite everybody that's going to school, if you want to come on down to the altar right now, and Tyler's got something that he wants to give to you. So come on down, take a knee. Come on down, we're going to pray for you. It's okay if you don't have your backpacks. Oh, Tyler's busy doing something else. For some of us, it's math or algebra. For some of us, it's more complex biology and chemistry. For some of us, it's about relationships and how to get along. For some of us, it's how to respect authority. And for some of us, it's how to take on and become a leader. Lord, for all that we need to know, we thank you that the most important thing is how you love us and how you're with us in all things. We pray your blessings be with these students, with these teachers, for all of us in lifelong learning, that we may pause and we may give you thanks. In Christ's holy name, amen. amen. Don't come find me later if you want one. Of course, we celebrate after worship as we put on our swimsuits and have fun on the spot. All are welcome. 
Everybody, coach, you ready to go down the side? <laughs> then we invite our extras to come forward that we may worship God with God's tithes and our offerings. Lord, in a worshipful way, we pause and we give you thanks, reminding the place from where all blessings come from. But as we return a part of that, Lord, we ask that you bless it, multiply it, further it for your kingdom here on earth and us in your service. In Christ's holy name, amen. <laughs>
Anybody got something good they want to celebrate? Yes, ma'am. Careful for us, those of us who have loved having Blanche nearby for a long time, but we celebrate that she's okay. Um, I do have that mailing address and a phone number, um, and I'll try and make it available to uh, give it to Dawn. So for them, some of you just want to write cards and such as that. What else do we celebrate? Yes, ma'am. Answered prayers. Answered prayers. Good to have Aurora back with us. Move back home. And as we pray, I know we have concerns. We pray for our uh, election and for uh, the process of that. Um, pray for our community. Uh, tell us about uh, Leonard. What's going on with Mr. Blaine? So he's still in ICU. It's about three weeks now. He was going to head to a room, but his oxygen started dropping, so... Okay, we just continue to keep he and you and all the family in our thoughts and prayers. <coughs> Who else are we praying for? Adam Richard's father passed away suddenly yesterday, and they're asking for our prayers. Okay, so uh, that's uh, Sherry Smith, Sherry Bishop's, Bishop's son-in-law. Son for those who know uh, So continue to remember them. May it to be they just carry on their hearts. We all have somebody, there's plenty that are taking care of their parents and taking care of loved ones. We continue to remember them as well. And what a privilege it is to gather in God's name. And as we unite our hearts, the Lord be with you. And also be with you. There's so much in this world to struggle against. There's so much that we seem to wake up and have to fight against. But Lord, today, as we remember what you have done for us, remind us once again that you've already fought the fight, that you've already won the battle, and that all we need to do in this world is to just be faithful. Strengthen us, Lord, to stay true to who we are and to who you are in us. And Lord, as we gather together, we lift up so many, so many that are taking care of their parents and their loved ones, those that, Lord, wish that they could be here, but Lord, help us as the church to go out to them. And help us, Lord, in this community, even in this time of election, that we may be people of faith that when people look to us, they see you. And Lord, when they see you, May they desire, hunger, and thirst for you in their lives as well. For we give you thanks for Christ, our Lord and our example. In his name we pray. Amen.
Good to have you back. I want to read from Matthew chapter 13 and then jump back over to the saga of Abraham and his family in Genesis 29. But in Matthew 13, Jesus is reminding the disciples and all those that will listen about the nature of reality, what he would call the kingdom of God. And he told them another parable. He said, the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and planted in his field, and though it was the smallest of all your seeds, yet when it grows, it is the largest of the garden plants and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air will come and perch in its branches. I also want to read from Genesis chapter 29. So we continue the saga of Abram and his family, what I like to think of as a big soap opera. And I think that uh, TV should get a hold of this. Let me sidestep just for a moment. I think TV has done a good thing. If you're not watching uh, the TV show The Chosen, I think you should. Some of y'all are nodding and you know about that. Look for that, The Chosen. Uh, good storyline, I don't always agree with everything. For instance, the first episode, they're sitting by um, sterno cans for candlelight. I don't think they had sterno cans in the first century. But uh, they eventually get around to those other little lamps. I think somebody historical got a hold of the writers. Uh, but it's a pretty good storyline. You know, you got to remember, when you try to recreate the Bible, even there were four folks that already wrote the story of Jesus, and they didn't all agree. So uh, this is Dallas Jenkins, who is the son of Jeremy B. Jenkins, that we know from the Left Behind series. Pretty good story, though, right? I just, on a side note, want to say, hey, Hollywood is doing some good stuff, so if y'all get a chance, see that. But we tell the story of the saga of Abraham and how God, remember, God has created a covenant with Abraham. We had Brother Flowers that was up here while I was away one time talking about covenant, and I'm hoping that we're drilling this home to you. Covenant is about relationship. Covenant is about God's promise. God... Covenant is about how we relate to one another because it's not contract. It's not if you don't do this, I won't do that. It's that we're both focused on something bigger than ourselves. And we try and live into that, live into that relationship with God. And the, the essence of that covenant is God's love for us. So, time to review. God made a promise. A covenant with Abraham had three points to it. I've been doing this just about every time I got up here. Y'all tell me, what are the three points of the covenant? Father-in-law nations. Father nations. That means you're going to have lots of children. And your children are going to be like the stars in the sky. Your children are going to be like grains in the sand. Father Abraham. Many children. Father of many nations. What else is part of that covenant? We preachers love it when y'all remember what we're talking about. <laughs> All right, it has to do with where they're going to live. Anybody remember? You're going to live in the promised land as we read the Psalms. You're going to live in the land of Canaan. The only problem is there's all these Ike people that are already living there. Y'all remember the Ike people? Hittites, Amalekites, Gebusites, Flankites, Parasites, all the Ike people? They're already there. So they're kind of down in the very, very bottom of the area in Beersheba. Remember, it's from Dan to Beersheba. Is kind of the land of Canaan. <laughs> so, be the father of many nations. You're going to live in this area that I'm going to give to you. And then the third thing is the most important thing we want to remember what? We'll all, all be blessed by this. All of us, even today, you and I, are blessed by this relationship that God had from Abram. But then there's this irony. He's supposed to be the father of many nations. How many children does he have? Abraham had more than he had two. Come on. They say none back here. Abraham had two children. One of which we don't think about. The, the, the child with his uh, Hagar, the handmaiden. But we want to follow Isaac, the child of laughter. But the irony is, is they were much great in age. And so now he's supposed to be the father of many nations. And he really only practically has one child? Where's the blessing in all this? Okay. So Isaac has how many children? Two. Come on, Bible 
Bible study. He has two children. You got Dave back here. You've got two children. Uh, the oldest one is the one that probably but most of us in Mississippi would like, Esau. Esau is an outdoors guy. He's a hunterman, hunter fisherman. Uh, he likes being outside. He's daddy's boy because he goes and he kills the wild game and comes back and cooks it for um, <coughs> daddy Isaac. But then there's Jacob. Jacob's the second born. Jacob's the trickster. Well, I kind of like, if you ask the kids today, tell me about Thor and Loki. They understand Thor and Loki. Well, it's kind of like Jacob and Esau. Jacob was the trickster. He was the younger brother. He was mama's boy. He stayed at home. And mama said, guess what? Your father's about to pass on the blessing. The blessing of the inheritance. Now quickly, go put some fur on your arms like your older brother. I'll cook something for him and he will give you what he tricked his dad into giving him the blessing. So older brother Esau, he was just happy with this, right? No. He grabbed a shotgun. He said, you better get out of here because I'm fixing to get you. Jacob is running for his life. Now he's out in the desert. His mama says, go run to my brother, Laban. Now he's out there and he'll take care of you. So Jacob is running for his life. This is the people that God chooses to work with, folks. Don't forget the covenant. This is the people that God chooses to covenant with. This is the mustard seed, you see. It's just a little thing. So Jacob's running for his life, and he gets in the area where his uncle Laban is, and he finds some, uh, some farmers, and they come up to the well, and they're feeding their flocks. And he said, I'm looking for Uncle Laban. And they said, oh, we know Laban. We do business with him. And not only that, look, coming from over there, there's his daughter, Rachel. And now we have the meat cute, you see here comes Rachel coming to draw water. Jacob looks up at him. Oh, she's gorgeous. And he falls in love with her. I think in reverse, if we remember the scene where Elizabeth Bennett sees uh, Fitzgerald Darcy coming through the fog from a distance, you know. Y'all don't watch Pride and Prejudice. Okay, all right. Okay. Mr. Darcy. But he falls in love with Rachel. And he goes to meet his uncle Laban and sees if he can find a job and figure things out. So we pick the story up again, the saga of Abraham and his family. This is the third season, the story of Jacob and his children. It might be considered the, the uh, real housewives of Beersheba again, third version. Because we start in chapter 29, verse 15. After Jacob had stayed with him for a whole month, Laban said to him, Just because you're a relative of mine, should you work for me for nothing? Tell me what your wages will be. Now Laban had two daughters, and the oldest one's name was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. And Leah had weak eyes. What do weak eyes mean? It's kind of unclear, but I think it kind of meant she probably couldn't look you in the eyes, maybe liked a little confidence or something of that nature, but a little shy. Leah had weak eyes, but Rachel was lovely and form and beautiful, and Jacob was in love with Rachel. And he said, I'll work for you for seven years in return for your younger daughter, Rachel. Laban said, it's better that I give her to you than to some other man, and stay here with me. So Jacob served seven years to get Rachel. But they seemed like only a few days to him because of his love for her. Ah, oh, love flies in the Time flies when you're loaded. And Jacob said to Laban, Give me my wife. The time is completed, and I want to be with her. So Laban brought together all of the people in the place and gave a great feast. And when the evening had come, he took his daughter, Leah, not Rachel, and he gave her to Jacob. And Jacob lied with her. Now he must have been a real walker of a party, is all I think. So Jacob wakes up. In the morning came, there was, there was Leah. And Jacob said to Laban, What is this you have done to me? I served you for Rachel, didn't I? Why did you deceive me? The trickster has been tricked. And Laban replied, It's not our custom to give the younger daughter in marriage before their older one. 
Finish this daughter's bridal week, and then we'll give you the younger one also in return for a, another seven years of work. Jacob did so, and he finished the week with Leah. Then Laban gave his daughter Rachel to be with his wife, and Laban gave his servant her girl Bilhah, the daughter of Rachel, her maidservant. So Jacob lay with Rachel also, and he worked for Laban another seven years. And then the next verses are about Jacob's children. And we kind of begin the blessing at that point. Folks, it's the word of God for the people of God. Let the people say, Thanks be to God. Remind us, Lord, how you bless mustard seeds and maybe even the things that we want to toss aside, but how you do great things when we put you in your hands. In Christ's holy name, amen. When I was at Millsaps, I, I knew a really cute girl. Her name was... Uh, <laughs> Her name was Dory Jane. And I didn't really know Dory, Dory Jane personally. We both knew each other by name, and we'd say hi and say, because that when they even had a class together. But I really didn't know anything personal about her, and she didn't really know anything personal about me. And so I was just floored one day when we were in the cafeteria, and she walks out, and she sits down across from me, and I'm like, Ugh. And she says, I met your parents, and your dad fixed my car miraculously. And I was like, well, I'm so sorry for whatever conditions caused for you to have to meet my parents. And I promise you, there's nothing miraculous about either one of them. But she started to tell me the story that she was driving through my hometown of Bolton, Mississippi. She hit a big water puddle, and the car that she was driving just quit, just quit on her. She tried real hard to crank it, and it wouldn't crank, and she looked up and she walked to the closest house and she knocked on the door and lo and behold, my father answered the door and she said, I'm broke down. Can you help me out? And they invited her in. And to hear my father tell the story, uh, it was a common thing for people to hit that puddle when the, when the rains came hard and the cars died and they easily ended up dying right there in front of the house. But dad had seen this happen many times. He knew exactly what was going on. And so he invited Dory Jane in and Mama quickly cut a slice of pie, and they started to talk and filled the glass of tea. And Dory Jane said, you know, I was waiting for your dad to go get his tool kit, tool kit or something. I was waiting for him to go out and to pop the hood on the car and start to work on it to get it running, but all he wanted to do was eat pie and talk. <laughs> Where'd he go to school? Millsap. Oh, our son goes to Millsap. Do you know him? And, and so they got to talking, and Dory Jane said, I was waiting for him to do something with the car, but he kept saying, don't worry, it's going to be okay. Your car is going to be fixed. And they ate the pie, and they drank the tea, and then Dad looked at it and said, I think your car is done now. You can leave if you want to. It's amazing how sometimes the way that we think things are supposed to happen in life don't always happen the way that we want it to. And the real message for all of us as Christians is to just relax and know that God's got this and it's going to be okay. And if we live into the covenant, the promise that God has given to us, the covenant started a long time ago. Just look at this soap opera of a story of Abram and Sarah and Isaac and then Jacob and Esau and now Jacob's just trying to get married, and he ends up having to be with the other sister, and then there's two other women that are involved in this. So now he's got four wives from Zilpah and Bilpah also, but also is where we begin the story of the children, the many children, because in fact they have a total of 13, one girl, we're going to push her aside for a moment, because we're going to focus on the boys who become the heads of families, the heads of clan, the heads of tribes. And we talk about the 12 tribes, one of them being Judah. And from the tribe of Judah, of course, comes the Jesus Christ. It's that little mustard seed, you see. It's that little bit of faith. It's that little bit of trust to know that God's got this. Because when we start off with Abraham, we say, surely, Abraham's got to have lots of kids. He's got to be the father of many nations. No, nope. just relax, not yet. And then comes Isaac. Well, certainly, Isaac, he's young. He's He's going to have lots of kids. He's going to take over. He's going to bless everybody. Nope. Not yet. Just relax. Eat your pie. 
It's going to be okay. And then we hear the story of Jacob. And we got the next set of the real housewives of Beersheba. And God begins to bless. As we tell the story about how Jesus came into this world, when really they were looking for somebody to be like a military leader, when really they were looking for somebody to kick out those Romans and to retake over the temple, this is what I love about the, the, the TV show, The Covenant. Jesus comes very humbly in the form of something like a carpenter or a rock mason. And he comes to transform hearts and lives, not necessarily to take over things politically. And people didn't understand. And then he begins to say, I'm going to die. And the disciples say, no. We don't need our Savior to die. We need our Savior to take over. And Jesus said, relax. Each time. I got this. But still they didn't understand. Until that third day. When he rose from the grave. But remember, he left with them a new covenant. A reminder of that relationship of God's love. And how we're supposed to be and how we're supposed to come to the Remember how Jesus said, when you eat of this, remember me. Remember I've got this. Remember I've already fought the fight. Remember just eat your pie and, and be okay. Have trust. Have faith. And know that I've got this. What my father understood was when, when Dory Jane hit the puddle as everybody else had, she probably threw a bunch of water up into a distributor cap, flooded that out, and so the spark never got to the spark plugs, and she could sit there all day and wear her battery out and nothing would ever fire. But he also understood another thing is that the heat of the engine would eventually evaporate all that water, and it'd be okay. So Dory Jane went back to her car and said, he didn't do a thing. <laughs> My mom and dad stood in the doorway waving at her. She got in her car, she put her key in, and she turned it, and it cranked beautifully. Down the road she went. We're reminded as we come to the table to know that God's covenant is with us always. It started with Abraham, but the blessing continues to be there all the way through the tribe of Judah and all the way to right now. And as we come, we remember what Christ has done for us. We remember that he's already fought the fight, we remember that that blessing, that covenant, lives with us even today. And so as we come this morning, I invite us to take all the things that we're fighting up against, whatever it may be, political, personal, family, church, let's come eat some pie. Lord God, we thank you for reminding us time and time We just have simple faith, like of a mustard seed. You can grow that to be the blessing, the blessing for the entire world. We give you thanks in Christ's holy name. Amen. I invite you to turn to page 13.
on the night which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread. He gave thanks to you. He broke the bread. He gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you. gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts of Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine and make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray the prayer of our Lord when he says, say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Beloved, it's the body of Christ. Broken for you. It's the blood of Christ shed for you. We invite our servants if you would come first. As they come, I'll remind you that this is an open table, open meeting for the faith of all Christians and Christians of all faiths. We don't discriminate anybody here, so if you want to come, you come to receive this blessing.
Peace go, let others come.
338, where he leads me, I will follow. 338, I'll invite you to stand as we sing.